Hey guys, Brian from Brian Boas here. True red tail boas are amazing animals and can make spectacular captives, but they're certainly not the right boa for everyone. Depending on the reasons why you're seeking out a boa and what you're looking for in your own pet boa, there's a pretty good chance that there's a better type of boa for you. So today I'm gonna to go over some common situations for which people acquire a pet boa. And if you fit into any one of these situations, odds are that a true red tail boa is not the best choice for you. If you're new to the channel, this is the place for information about all aspects of keeping and breeding boas in captivity. So if you wanna learn all about these amazing animals, be sure to subscribe. First, I wanted to clarify in this video by red tail boa, true red tail boa, I'm referring to boa constrictor constrictor, the specific race of boa constrictor native to Northern South America that's considered the true red tail boa. I know there's a lot of other boas that are called red tail boas, most commonly Colombian boas or pet store boas, which are boa imperator. But for this video, I'm specifically referring to the true red tail boa, boa constrictor constrictor. If you're confused about the differences between these two boas, I recommend you check out my video, Is My Boa a Red Tail? And so I also wanted to say that I do love red, true red tails. I, as you know, if you've been following the channel, my collection is largely built up of different types of true red tails. You know, they're kind of what I'm known for as far as my breeding, but they really are not the best boa for a lot of pe people. Many people see a picture of a true red tail and they're just blown away by the beauty and they decide that that's the boa that they want to keep, but they're really not the best choice for many people. Uh, boa keepers. I would say probably 90% of the people who are looking for a boa would be better off not getting a true red tail and getting another type of boa. And I'm going to go over the situations in which that might apply uh, depending on what you're looking for in your pet boa. The first situation where I would absolutely not recommend that you pick up a true red tail boa is if this is your first boa and you have no experience keeping boas before. And so I'm gonna go over the reasons why true red tail boas are not recommended as a first time boa, and that's really the rest of the video. But first I just wanted to say that I've done a video previously titled Best Beginner Boas, where I outlined some of the really easy to keep and really rewarding boas for beginners to keep. Um, my number one choice is just the normal pet store, Colombian, common, you know, boa. It's often called the Colombian red tail. Most people refer to these animals as red tails. Really, they're not true red tails. They're boa imperator. Um, but these animals are a lot more forgiving. In general, they make a lot better pets than the true red tails. And this particular animal is a Coops Pastel Colombian boa. Uh, but, you know, there's a lot of similar types of common boas out there. They might not be quite as colorful as this guy, um, but this you know, gives you a pretty good idea about a good type of boa for you know, a first time boa owner. In my video on beginning boas, I also went over some other types that are really good choices for beginners, including several types of dwarf boa um, and you know, several types of inexpensive morph boas as well. So check that out if this is gonna be your first boa and you have, haven't kept a boa before. The second situation where I would absolutely not recommend you get a true red tail is if you want an easy animal to care for that's going to have very straightforward forgiving husbandry. True red tail boas are a little bit temperamental as far as the husbandry. I wouldn't say that they're difficult to keep if you do your homework and do the you know, required background research, but they're definitely less forgiving than most other types of boas. And by that I mean you really have to have your husbandry right on point. The humidity, the temperature range, the enclosure, etc. True red tail boas need a cool side of about 75 to 80 with a hot spot of about 90. Uh, in, in general, they don't like it too hot. My true red tails typically are hanging out on the cool side of their cage. When I temp them with my thermometer, uh, they're typically around 78 to 80 degree body temperature. Um, they're less resistant to heat. You know, so you don't, you don't wanna keep them too hot uh, like other boas, but in general, they're just less forgiving. The same is with the humidity. You really have to have the humidity around 60, 70%, and they're more prone to difficulties shedding if the humidity is incorrect. Also, they tend to be more prone to things like respiratory infections. If you, you know, the temperature goes too hot, too low, 
or the humidity is not right. So just in general, they're less forgiving. Another thing about true red tail husbandry is that they are a lot more prone to regurgitation syndrome than most other types of boas. And this can be one of the most frustrating things that a beginning boa keeper has to deal with. Basically, the animals will regurgitate or you know vomit up the uh, whole rodent around three or four days after eating it. Regurgitation can be caused by a number of factors, but it's most often a hot spot that's too hot, feeding prey items that are too large, or handling the animal right after eating. In addition, if you feed them too often, they typically will end up regurgitating. And baby red tails have to be fed very sparingly, uh, every two to three weeks. And if you feed them more often than that, there's a pretty good chance you can end up having a regurgitation. And with regurgitating, um, once a boa starts doing this, if you feed them again too soon, odds are they're going to do it again. And then they might enter this vicious cycle from which, you know, it's very difficult to recover and they usually end up dying a couple months later after a number of, of regurgitations. So this actually is a three-year-old uh, female that was born here. I was going to show you guys one of my babies from last year, my 2020 babies, but I just fed them yesterday. And so I don't touch them at all for like at least three days after I feed them just to protect against regurgitation. And it's quite apparent to me from all the comments on Facebook groups and reptile forums that regurgitation in baby true red tail boas is the number one issue that uh, keepers face with these animals and unfortunately a lot of times people can't get out of the cycle and the baby boa ends up dying. So again regurgitation is a lot less common with other types of boas. One of the reasons you might want to think about not getting a true red tail boa. The third situation in which you might want to not get a true red tail is if you have a limited budget as far as the cost of the animal. I know a lot of people new to boas are probably taken aback with sticker shock by the prices of some of the animals these days. And most beginning boa pet keepers are probably thinking about a budget of somewhere around $100 to $200 for their first boa. And so a true red tails now for a quality captive bred animal, the current going uh, price is around $500 and up. And so the Suriname and the Guiana forms tend to be the least expensive. Some of the other types such as this Picapo Peruvian are typically around $1,000 and up. And the prices have just been climbing quite a bit in the last few years. If you look at a lot of the other types of non-red tail boas, you know, the pet store boas, Colombian type boas, it's typically fairly easy to find one in the $100 to $200 range at a show. You're gonna pay a little bit more if you go to a pet shop. Um, Sometimes you can get them even less than $100 if someone is uh, at, at the end of the show and someone has a lot of unsold animals and they just want to unload them. Um, but again, a true red tail boa is going to run you quite a bit more money. There are sometimes uh, wild caught animals that are available for as little as around two to $300 a piece, but I highly recommend you do not buy any wild cut true red tail, as there's a very high mortality rate among these animals, and they're very difficult to get established. So again, if you're on a somewhat limited budget, you wanna avoid getting a true red tail boa. The fourth situation where I would definitely not recommend getting a true red tail is if you want a very calm, handleable animal, and you're primarily looking for a pet to handle. And so don't get me wrong, true red tails aren't always aggressive. In fact, most of my animals aren't aggressive, but they are definitely less handleable. They just tend to be kind of tem temperamental and a little bit insecure. Um, this particular female is a classic example. You can see she's just not comfortable, you know, uh, just sitting still. She's kind of a, spazzing quite a bit. Um, this particular animal, it just, she always needs to constrict. They just really always want to wrap around something. And of course they have such strong muscles. Um, in general, they're stronger than other types of boas. But it's just not a very calm experience to take one of these animals out and handle it. It's really not enjoyable. Some of my other non-red tail boas, they're much more chill. They're much more enjoyable to handle. You can see uh, this female is just, she's not gonna bite me. She's not aggressive. 
but she just doesn't want to sit still. She wants to kind of freak out. And that's what uh, true red tail boas, their, their temperament tends to be, you know, a little more temperamental and a little more jumpy and just not nearly as chill as some of the other types of boas. So again, if you're looking for a pet boa that you can handle, a uh, true red tail boa is definitely not the best choice for you. So incidentally, I just put back that female Suriname true red tail I showed you, and she actually kind of spazzed in her cage and ended up knocking over her water dish, and it flew out the front of the cage, and water spilled all over the floor. But again, that's because her temperament is, you know, quite somewhat nervous and uneasy, and you know, just not a very calm animal. In contrast, I wanted to show you guys this uh, boa constrictor Amorali. This is a Bolivian. Uh, short tail boa. This is the uh, orange crush bud line and this animal is just super chill He's just so enjoyable to handle. I take him out. He holds on, but he doesn't squeeze He's not cutting off the circulation in my hand. He's just kind of calmly exploring um, You know, he seems like he's intelligent one of my most intelligent boas But just a real pleasure to handle this animal a real great pet, you know, just to enjoy to take out and I would say that my true red tail boas in general, they're not animals that are enjoyable to handle. They're more enjoyable to look at because they're so beautiful. But there's quite a number of boas in my collection that are definitely more enjoyable to handle than my true red tails. The fifth situation where a true red tail boa is not gonna be your best choice is if you want a boa that's easy to breed and a breeding project that has a very, very high chance of working out. And so true red tail boas are very rewarding to breed. You know, I get a huge amount of satisfaction every time I have a litter successfully, but they're not nearly as straightforward to breed as many other boas. In fact, it's really more of an art than a science. You can do everything right that has worked for you before, and it just doesn't work that year, or it doesn't work with a certain pair of boas. You know, sometimes what works for one breeder uh, doesn't work for another breeder. You know, you, you can try to duplicate the same conditions as much as possible and it just doesn't work. You know, often the, the males are not very aggressive breeders and it's hard to get them to, you know, successfully mate and, you know, sire a litter. Um, sometimes it works easily, you know, it, sometimes there's just no rhyme or reason. But I would say in general, it's less of a sure thing breeding true red tails than some other types of boas. In fact, some other types of boas will breed very, very easily. And, you know, one example in my experience has been the Argentine boa, like this one. In fact, my second boa litter, which happened back in 2007, was an Argentine litter that was really by accident. You know, I had bred my first litter in 2005 and uh, you know i wasn't really as into keeping boas and breeding them so basically i wasn't planning on breeding in 2007 but i just put the uh, male and female in the cage together while i was cleaning the other cage um, and they were together for maybe a few hours i kind of forgot about them and then once i cleaned the cage i went back and got the male and put him back in his cage but, you know, sure thing, uh, the animal became gravid just from that one brief uh, encounter. And then, you know, f a few months later, um, I had a litter of, I think it was like 13 or 14 babies. Completely unplanned, completely, you know, um, basically by luck. You know, since obviously I knew a lot less about breeding boas back then. Um, but other types of boas in general are going to be more of a sure thing if you want a boa to breed. And true red tail boas are definitely not the most straightforward boa for successful breeding. So the sixth reason why a true red tail boa is, may not be the best boa for you is if you're specifically looking for a boa because of its beauty. And a lot of people see these pictures of these true red tails and they're kind of blown away and they think they're the, you know, the most beautiful boa they've ever seen. But I can tell you from my experience working with lots of different types of boas, there are many other types of boas that are as equally as beautiful in my opinion. And so this is a Barranquilla Columbia boa. This is actually a boa imperator. But what's interesting about this animal is that it, be, being that it comes from an, uh, a range that's pretty close to the true red tail boas, it has a lot of characteristics of the true red tail boas. You can see, you know, that very high contrast, um, they have really crisp markings. 
And then if you look at the tail, it's got this rusty red tail, this beautiful rusty red color. And although these animals are not true red tails, they definitely do have red in their tail. But what these animals have as a big advantage over the true red tail, they're much calmer, they're much easier to handle, they're much more forgiving on their husbandry. They're really the best of both worlds as far as I'm concerned. And these branchia boas are one of my all time favorite localities. I haven't been keeping them that long, but you know, I've been really blown away uh, from what I've seen in the time I've had them. There's unfortunately this snobbery in boa collectors. People think that only the true red tails are you know, the best boa and any other boa is somehow inferior. And this is just a load of nonsense because any boa can be a great captive. It can be you know, enjoyable to keep as a pet and it can be very beautiful both you know, in its own right and you know, objectively it's a very beautiful animal. So don't get a true red tail because you think that that's the only boa that's going to be beautiful or because you believe this nonsense out there about other boas being inferior. So just ignore what most of these people say on these Facebook forums. You know, look at the boa, decide for yourself. You know, this is definitely one of the most beautiful boas in my collection. More beautiful than many of my true red tails and this is not a true red tail boa. So that was some reasons why if you're considering getting a true red tail you should definitely think twice. If these situations don't apply to you, by all means, look into getting a true red tail. As I said, they're one of my favorite animals. They're absolutely spectacular, but you really need to get it for the right reason. And I think that um, maybe around 10% or less of boa keepers really are in the situation where they should be thinking about getting a true red tail. So I hope this video was helpful. As always, if you have any questions or comments, shoot me a line via social media. Thanks for watching and enjoy your boas.